Welcome to Happily Ever After is just the beginning. Keeping your relationship not just together, but happy, and we mean truly happy, is part art and part science. You've come to the right place. Here's your host, Leslie Dorries. No one likes criticism, even if it's done in a constructive way, whatever that means. And having your shortcomings pointed out to you hurts, especially if it's being done by someone you care about. And what do most of us do in these moments? We explain why what we did was okay, or that the other person just misunderstood, or that it wasn't as bad as they're making it out to be. In other words, we get defensive. And instead of taking in what the other person is sharing, it gets deflected and with the end result being hurt, frustration and or resentment on the part of the other person. And it hurts your relationship with that person. And just because this response, while natural, it's very damaging. And so I've made it the subject of today's show to help me walk through this really difficult yet common topic, I'm joined by relationship expert, speaker, and author, Lisa Merlot Booth. So Lisa, thanks for coming back on the show and talking about one of the things that gets a lot of people into trouble and their relationships into the ditch. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome for me coming on. So let's, let's just get really specific. So can you Give us a definition of defensiveness and also an explanation of why it happens. So, great question. First off, defensiveness is a form of self-protection. And um, somebody gives us feedback and our first response is about us. (laughs) It's about either protecting ourselves. It's really about protecting ourselves Mm -hmm. in And that can take so many different, um, I I call it faces of defensiveness, right? That can look so many different ways, like, I didn't do that, or, oh my gosh, you do the same thing, or we can, (laughs) you know, spin it on them. There's like many different ways that we do it, but ultimately, it's really about self-protection. And it's that knee-jerk response that we do to take the spotlight and the blame off of ourselves and um, place it elsewhere. Okay. So, all right. So it is something that happens. Does, any, does anybody even really think about it or, or, ha, or has it just become automatic for most of us? Well, it's often like the knee jerk move. It's, it's really before we're ever even thinking often, you know, we just quickly jump into that, piece and it's it's a pervasive like if you really have a problem with defensiveness it's a knee-jerk pervasive pattern right of Mm -hmm. of you know kind of shifting blame um it's also can be somebody struggling with um accountability it's a lack of accountability lack of taking responsibility difficulty with apologizing and repairing your mistakes and there's a lot of reasons so a lot of reasons why we do it in terms of um, sometimes it's about what we learned. Sometimes it is normally a knee jerk response that we just do, you know, before we're ever thinking about it, but that Uh knee jerk response can come about for several different reasons. You know, it could be um, that's what our parents did. It could be Uh that's how we got in trouble when we were kids. It could be about self-esteem, right? I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a bad mom. I'm not a, you know, it's, it's like, I just want you, you have to see that I'm not bad. Right. (laughs) Um, And, and also culturally, like culturally, you know, there's this whole stigma around, you know, um, is it weak to say you're sorry or is it weak to, Uh to own, you know, be accountable and accept responsibility? (laughs) Yeah. Which, I mean, it's so funny. The reason why I'm laughing is because you you and I know that it's the exact opposite of being weak. Right. Mm -hmm. Being able to take accountability. But it's even, but, you know, but it's funny because even when we know it's coming, 
right? Even and, and I'm not talking necessarily about criticism, but but you know, it's like tomorrow I've got to do a practice talk, and so I know that I I'm I'm going to be asking for feedback, and I know some of the feedback isn't going to be positive, and it's kind of like okay, so how do I put on my little protective coat, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, I mean, and, and, it, and I don't even know what's coming. And so I think that when, it, when people don't know what's coming, does that make it worse? If you have a problem with defensiveness, um, yes, <laughs> because they don't have the opportunity to kind of slow themselves down and prepare for it. Okay. Right. It's like you need a moment to like just breathe and get yourself grounded so that you can hear it. So if you know that somebody really struggles with defensiveness and you just pop in and give them feedback nine times out of 10, they're going to react defensively. Yeah. And, and I know we're not just talking about romantic relationships because I'm thinking about people getting their performance appraisals at work. Too. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, yes. Oh, this happens everywhere. It's whether you're talking at work, you're talking home, you're talking, you know, romantic relationships, friendships, sibling relationships across the board, across the board. Um, and now I, I do want to do a little caveat on this. Like, when you say if somebody just gives the person feedback without, you know, giving them a heads up on it, does that make it harder? I will say that if you struggle with defensiveness or if the person struggles with defensiveness, yeah, nine times out of 10, they're going to react defensively because that's their stance, right? That I call uh -huh. it their edge. However, you are not responsible for their defensiveness. Like it's very, very right. important. People misplace blame all the time, right? Uh -huh. You can give them critical feedback in the moment and because you gave it in the moment, that's not causing them to be defensive. Those are two different issues. Right. It's, it's, it's their training. It's their natural reaction. So yeah. what, is, what is it about defensiveness that makes it so problematic in relationships? Well, you can't solve issues, right? <laughs> so if, if every time I'm upset and I go to my husband or I go to my, you know, children or my mom or whoever to explain like, hey, when, when this just happened, I was really hurt by that. Can you change it? They're going to get reactive with me or they're going to shut down or they're going to whatever. What happens is I start learning, oh, they can't handle this. They can't hear it. So if they can't hear it and they're going to get reactive or angry, then we can't solve this issue. And if we can't solve this issue, it's not going to get better. And if it doesn't get better, <laughs> then I'm looking at a, like a really tough employee who I may have to fire ultimately, or I'm mm -hmm. looking at a really tough marriage where I'm going to be either really unhappy if this doesn't change or I need to get us professional help. It, it just puts a roadblock on growth. It leads to so much um, struggle and an inability to work through issues, which means a lifetime of issues, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You know? I mean, and, I mean, and I do know that how how we approach somebody about an issue can go a long way to yes. making this better. But but we do still have these natural reactions, and we yeah. do, you know, I mean, and it's in you know that's why in the beginning I was talking about you know, whatever quote unquote constructive criticism is. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and, and a lot of it is the way in which people are approached, but, but we still have to be open. And I, I, and I guess it's, you know, I guess one of the things that I struggle with, and I think probably most people do, is we intellectually know that we don't know everything and that we are going to you know, stumble, we, that we're basically stumbling and bumbling our way through life. And, you know, that, that we're, we are going to hurt somebody's feelings or miscommunicate or do all of these things that really, in, in truth, aren't intentional, but mm -hmm. they still happen. I mean, it's like, so this idea that somehow if somebody says, you know, hey, Leslie, when you said that, you know, it hurt my feelings, it's like, 
oh, can I take that in? Can I, you know, even though my intent was not to hurt them, but can I, I mean, and isn't that also part of one of the problems is that if I suddenly am defensive and deflecting and withdrawing and all the other ways of, of you know, or what about kind of thing, that the other person feels dismissed. Right. You know, here's the, the here's a bitter pill for so many people to swallow. It does not matter what your intentions were. Mm. Let me say <laughs> that again. <laughs> it does not matter what your intentions were. You could have the best of intentions and still hurt somebody, mm-hmm. right? And and so when, that's, you know, one of the things so I'm, I'm doing a, a course coming up, and one of the things that we talk about is, you really have to know whose story you're in. I don't want to go too much into it, but right. like, it's not about your intentions. It's not about whether it hurt you or would hurt you or wouldn't hurt you or mm. right. Mm-hmm. If somebody's and it doesn't make you a bad person or a good person. It's just this thing happened. This is how it impacts me. And I would like some acknowledgement and repair on your end. I'm not saying you're bad. I'm not saying you Mm -hmm. did it on purpose. However, I am saying like this hurt and can you, can you own that? Can you, can you help me with that? If you're my boss, can you help me? Or if you're my employee, look, can you give me reassurance that you're going to do it different next time? Like it's a necessary part of any healthy relationship at work, at home or any place else. But isn't it also the way we learn? I mean, if I did everything perfectly, I'd never learn anything, right? I mean, right, I mean, right. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, this is, you know, this is like the whole thing when, you know, and when people talk about, well, I failed. It's like, well, did you really, or did you just find out you didn't know something, right? right. And now, and now you know. And so, what do we mm-hmm. want to do with that? You know, it, it's funny what you're talking about is. is one, I was just speaking to a client a, a minute ago, and I was saying, listen, feedback is a gift, right? If somebody's courageous enough to give you feedback, that is oxygen that's going to help you grow. You have to figure out if you're courageous enough to take it in and learn from it and breathe it in, right? You know, if my husband says to me, hey, you've been really distant or you've been working a lot and I haven't seen you, and I get super defensive with him, mm-hmm. right? Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep being distant. And I'm going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to train him to not give me that feedback. All the while, I push him back, push him back, push him back. Mm-hmm. Had I had the courage to hear him and be like, oh, wow, I didn't even notice that. You know, you're right. I actually, I have been working a lot. And, oh, honey, it's nice that you're missing me. <laughs> okay, let me, like, look at this. <laughs> right? It's like... Like, what a whole shift that is in a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, and it's so it's so funny because I'm thinking about a time I was on some medication for something, and all of a sudden I realized that my moods were, like, all over the place. And I think I said right. something to my husband. He goes, oh, my God, I'm so glad you noticed this. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean and, and it was something complete. I mean, it, it literally was related to the med- – it was a side effect of the medication I was taking. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. okay, we're not doing this anymore, especially because it wasn't even solving the problem I was taking it for. But, but you know, right. and, and I feel a little bad that my husband – couldn't tell me, but probably in the midst of my mood swings, he was probably trying to figure out, okay, when do I do this? Um, Right. He was very grateful that I had realized that, oh, something is really off. And it wasn't him. It wasn't me. It was this thing, right? And sometimes, and and I think that's part of the challenge and because we do take these things so personally, Mm -hmm. even though, as you're saying, they're really, they're really not judgments about us, but really kind of information about the other person, right? It's exactly right. It's just information. And the example that you just gave is an excellent example. Going back to what we said a minute ago, is that wasn't your intention. You had no intentions. It wasn't even right. However, it was still impacting your husband negatively, right? Yeah. And so, you know, it really, it's, it's about 
this is about, I mean, your husband didn't share that with you, but had he shared it with you and had he said that, it's just about his story and, and what's going on for him. Some 